So today we're going to pull out the fuel tank and replace it with a new one uh, from Wolfsburg West. And the reason I chose Wolfsburg West is because uh, they say it's powder coated. Everyone else I looked at was was painted or from Brazil. The Brazilian ones looked awful. They had they had uh, uh, junk in the seams and everything, and and uh, they the stamping wasn't good. So I'll show you that. And then we're going to uh, take out the other fuel tank, the fuel tank that's in the car, and uh, put the new one in. First thing you gotta do, get rid of all the crap. So, got the spare tire. The window washer, which doesn't work. Got our jack back here. Emergency toolbox. Spare fan belt, some duct tape, flashlight, something to brush off the car with, some Marvel mystery oil, and I had some miscellaneous parts and bits in here in a baggie. And we've got a carpet in here. And that gets us to our stock fuel tank, which looks great on the outside. The inside is an absolute nightmare. It's full of uh, rust and all kinds of stuff. We've also got cracked hoses here. We're not going to replace those today, but I do want to replace those at some time. So I'm going to take all that off and uh, clean it up really well. We've also got a little wiring cover here. And the other thing I want to do while I'm in here is check this system which drains water out of the air intake here for the flow through uh, air system and these hoses are so fragile and so old now I need to need to replace that but that just dumps out underneath the, the body of the car um, and the first thing we do is there are four bolts here that hold in the uh, the fuel tank you take those out you need to undo all these clamps and slide this up take this tube off and there's another uh, tube for the evaporative system over here um, which doesn't work anymore but we'll hook up the the, the hoses anyway um, that keeps the fuel smell down and they're in pretty good shape they're not cracking or anything i think they were done sometime not too long ago but they're in good shape and uh our vent hose up here is in pretty good shape too so uh, i'm not too worried about hit it really these two hoses are the the bad ones but uh i don't smell any fuel right now and i've got this down to uh, about a gallon or so in there so let me get some tools and uh we'll get started pulling the fuel tank out okay so the first thing is these uh four clamps here Really easy to 15 millimeter. Once they come loose, so. your mileage may vary. You might be rusted up, but these come out pretty easily. I've had this tank out once already to check it out and get most of the grit and stuff out of it but it was really nasty work they um, they have a little ridge right here and they work on a cantilever so this sits against against the body first and then it when you tighten down the nut it pushes down or the, the bolt it pushes down on the tank just using that as a pivot kind of cool Remove 
this fuel inlet here. This was one of the innovations of 68, I think, when they added the tank that you could fill from the outside of the car. You didn't need to open up the hood, which is kind of cool, but it added some complication and added some uh, emission controls as well that uh, not everyone was a fan of, but it helped Volkswagen keep making cars. They had to make them uh, meet emission standards of the day. And I pushed this kind of up on the hoses. I'm trying to get the hoses kind of slid up. So, and this will go a little farther up there also. And there we go. And that just gets that out of the way so we can get the, get the tank out of there. So those guys are out of the way. There's a little one that's just friction fit over here. And just gotta remove the wire from the uh, sending unit. So now everything is loose up top. Now we have to go underneath. Okay, the second step of this is we've got to cramp off this uh, line that goes between the bottom of the tank and through the tunnel there, which I'm going to do with a pair of needle nose vice grips that I have. And I've got to take off that uh, clamp that I put on there. I don't want leaks, so I clamp that off. Um, so I need to take that off and then we can pull the tank out from up top. And I don't have any way of taking that clamp off and holding the camera at the same time. So I'm not going to try it. Okay, so we got that clamp off and the hose is all free underneath. Next part is just pulling out the tank. It's not too hard. The hardest part of this is there are some wires for the headlight here on the uh, passenger side and the driver's side that go you know, through this little indentation on either side of the tank. So you have to kind of watch those as you get this out also. And you gotta get these hoses uh, kind of out of the way. So I'm gonna kind of do it this direction. Um, and if you've got 10 gallons of fuel in your tank, you're gonna have a bad day. So don't do that either. Either get, get the fuel out of your tank or uh, wait until you run down out of some fuel and see I'm already kind of stuck over here let's see there we go got hoses and wires oh and your washer fluid all in the way under jack come on there we go there we go fuel spill but we'll clean that up and if you look down in here there's your hose that goes down through the tunnel there's a little seal there that's not in bad shape there's um you know some brake lines underneath here if you want to change your brake brake master cylinder 
this is the way to do it too because it's all accessible right there i also bought new hoses for the brake lines here these little guys are here that i will probably replace today also since i have the tank out i might as well and uh, get the brake lines all in good shape again uh, gotta be careful down here of these plastic fittings. You gotta be super careful on those or be prepared to replace them. I'm gonna try and be super careful and not break them so I don't have to replace them. Also, uh, I got new foam <coughs> for underneath the tank. Uh, it doesn't appear to have any stickiness to it. It doesn't seem to have any glue on the new foam, so I'm not sure how that will work. Um, glue stick, possibly. And I'm dead serious because that's about what I have. <laughs> we'll try that and see how that works. But I'm going to do a little cleanup in here. I need to move my sending unit, which works great. I'm going to move it over. Um, just looking at the inlet of this tank, you can tell what's going on there. There's, there's lots of rust. You can just see down there in the tank itself. Uh, there's lots of rust and corrosion in there and the new tank is all powder coated inside so we won't have to deal with any of that and I'll bring you back when I get the new tank ready all right I did my might as well too since I was in here I pulled off the brake fluid lines that one was leaking it wasn't on there very good and was really wallowed out and it had been dripping down here anyway I pulled it out and only about a half an ounce of fluid came out of the whole system got that off these two here, there's lines here. Oh, there they are, right there. That's the tops, there's the bottoms. And then up here on this end, where they attach to the tank. So these are a reservoir tank. And those little pieces line. And unfortunately, I ordered line. Um, it did say in the description, blue or black. Happened to get black. So um, I've always been used to the blue line. Just thought that was the coolest thing. Oh, there's cool blue lines. I guess for blue for brakes. Blau? Brake? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know what the German is for brake. But uh, I'm putting black back on. So I'm just going to... i got a meter of line here. And I'm just going to cut line the exact same lengths as those. And put them back on. And uh, you've seen a person cut hose before. And push it onto a connector. And uh, so I'm going to spare you that. And okay, we took care of our might as well. Just cut new hoses, the same size as the old hoses. Uh, remembered where these lines were. Um, they just were bent a little bit differently. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. And got those in and filled up the reservoir. Um, some bubbles will come out. And I do need to like bleed, bleed this brake system. Um, but these are not pressure lines. These are low pressure lines and they are kind of self bleeding because of gravity. The uh, air comes out of these hoses and uh, the fluid goes in. So um, I will have to go down there and crack the, the wheel cylinders and, and bleed those here at some point. Um, not today though. I'm going to finish putting in the tank and then I've got to clean the carb again uh, because I got some more crap through there, but getting this done, everything should run great. So uh, let me set up again and uh, I'll get the uh, new fuel tank in here. So the main thing we're doing here by getting a new tank, is if you look in the bottom of my filter funnel here, I look at the filter, it's got little bits of rust and crap on it and down there too. And the main reason is in the old tank underneath the uh, spigot here, the part that comes out of the tank, uh, there's supposed to be a filter there too, a little screen mesh filter. And uh, it's gone. <laughs> it's just non-existent. So um, the new tank, I got a new filter, got all new seals and everything, new, uh, new one of those little guys. So we'll get all of that done and uh, we'll eliminate all of that crap. And uh, it's probably blocking up my uh, my regular fuel filter too. So I'll go down to the auto parts store and get one of those little plastic filters and replace that as well. But uh, there's our big problem right there. That's what clogs up your jets in your carburetor is all of that crap. 
and even the small bits will get through those paper filters and uh, get in your carburetor. Or if, you're, if your uh, filter gets plugged up, it can kind of pull those through uh, before it will pull through gas through. So uh, you just want to make sure this whole system is clean and uh, then you won't have carb problems like I've been having. So here's our new tank from Wolfsburg West and it just matches the old tank. It has a seal already. You can see down in there we've got the uh, We've got the outlet. Uh, there's a filter that goes up through there. I'll get that in a, out in a second. It's got the new, uh, well, everything's new. It's a brand new tank, but it's really, really welded together well. Got a nice finish on it. And the uh, most important thing is it's not full of rust inside. <laughs> That's the best part. So I'll get, uh, get all this set up and I'll show you. So we're gonna go ahead and reuse the old um, sending unit because it actually works and it works pretty well um, you slip that in super easy and that goes like that the uh, on this one the plastic part here points towards the filler um, and that's how it goes in yeah, I just got to put in those screws which I can't do one-handed uh, but we'll get the we'll get the uh, sending unit on and then we'll put on the uh, the outlet on the other side. Okay, so I've got two of these in tank filters. One was from Wolfsburg West, that's this one right here, and this one was from CIP1. And the Wolfsburg West looks like the mesh is just a little bit finer than the CIP1. I can see bigger holes in the CIP1. However, CIP1, come on is huge. CIP1 has this little gasket there that the Wolfsburg does not and also if you see in there it's got a, uh, a little uh, piece of tubing that holds that open and the uh, the Wolfsburg does not. You can squish it. Um, I think even though the Wolfsburg has the finer screen I'm going to go with the CIP because of that gasket and the little stand out there. I don't know if that makes a difference. In my mind, it does. Um, but basically, there, in. And you can see down there the little standout that helps the fuel go through. Um, I don't know if I want it that close, though. I might push it down a little bit further, kind of in the middle of the tube. Um, but you can see the Wolfsburg. Um, oh, well, it's got a little. Where is that? Yeah, it's got a little standout also. Um, maybe I take the filter, I mean the uh, the gasket off the CIP and put it on the Wolfsburg. I think I'll I think I'll do that. All right, so we've got our CIP's Berg uh, hybrid on there. I just like having that little that little gasket on there. And now we got to put on the uh, the outlet. And that has a little whoop. <laughs> All right, that's not going to work. They put you down for a second. There you go. That goes inside of there. So that outlet's there. And uh, that's straight up, and then that's where the, uh, the, oops, the line attaches there. That part straight up and the line attaches there. And then this guy goes on there. Like so. And points one way or the other. I'll have to look. I don't remember how I got this on there. I keep moving the camera up here. We can't see. Um, I can't remember which direction that points. Oh, let's look. So that's that side. So, yeah, it does. It points, it points that way. So I just need to snug that down. I'm not going to over tighten, just snug so fuel doesn't come out. And uh, we'll put this this foam seal here. There we go, this foam seal here uh, around the opening, and we'll put the new tank in. 
the other thing is I've got this this new seal for the tank and I think I probably would have been just as well off going to the hardware store and buying some weather stripping but I've got it um, could have bought a lot of weather stripping for $11 but um, I'm gonna put it on the tank I'm not gonna put it on the car because uh, the tank is rectangular the car holes rectangular too but this is brand new tank so this will actually just stick on there really nice um, and seal that up uh, <clears throat> this is the area I was talking about if you can see this there's a little bit of roughness here that on the uh, Brazil made tanks I looked at was like folded it was like folded steel it was really bad um, and that's why I went with the Wolfsburg West it just looked to be the best tank and it was the same price Wolfsburg was $147 um, the others that I saw were around $139 to $179. Um, so I don't think you can beat this deal. Um, you know, I did change out that, that in-screen filter, uh, finer filter, I think, from Wolfsburg would be better. And, uh, uh, but I like their outlet. I've got the, the outlet on there. Um, and uh, I'll just glue this up and we'll get the tank in. All right, let's go ahead and try this. Uh, I've got the... The seal, or the, I don't know if you call it a gasket or a seal, but the foam kind of stuck on there. And am I backwards? Yes, backwards. So, yeah, it should stay. A little, not too rough with it. But I'm going to go in this side first. out of the way. That's pretty good. And this side's tough because these wires, I know you can't see it over there. Gotta get the headlight wires out of the way and few other things. Yeah, old emissions lines and all that. Get that pulled through there. And I want to make sure my foam is still pretty good. Seems to be. I still have foam on this side. Let me look underneath. See if it pushed through. This, uh, I think we got our foam and everything in there, so ta da! And I just gotta reverse. We gotta put all this stuff back on, like the. Uh, and the hose clamp for that. <laughs> Where'd the hose clamp go? There it is. That's good. Now that hose clamp. Uh, maybe I'll wait a second on that one. Get this one first. This one's tough. And like I said, I need new uh, new hoses for the for the filler. Put the evaporative system on there. We've got the sending unit in there. I'll uh, wrestle with this guy for a minute and connect the bottom. And then we should be done. I'll bring you back. All right, there we are. Tank's back in. Uh, oops, all the connectors are on. We got all the hoses tightened on. Hoses are badly cracked. We do need to replace those very shortly, but 
it will allow fuel to go in there. It might stink a little bit now and again. Um, evaporative system is still on. At least the one on the front. The one in the back is gone, but this one's still there. So we'll just we'll just hook it up. It keeps the uh, fumes from coming out that hole. All the wires are moved where they need to be, and uh, our little foam seal is in there. Maybe not perfect, but it's in there. And we got an empty tank. So now we'll uh, we'll start working on the back. I got to clean out the carburetor again, and uh, uh, I think the uh, the needle and seat is not moving properly. Uh, so I'm gonna check that out and uh, clean that out really good. And uh, we should get going here in just a couple hours. And uh, I'll show you a little bit of that too. And then we'll go for a drive. Well, it's running. It's stalled out once. That's running fine. I don't know. I think it's working now. I did take apart the carb and just clean out the jets and uh, change the adjustment on the, the float a little bit. Someone had put two washers on there. I just uh, took off the two and left the one. I did buy a rebuild kit. They're super cheap, so it doesn't matter. There's the extra washer that someone left on there. Uh, the rebuild kits are super cheap, so I don't mind buying one. I'll need one someday, so maybe in the spring I'll rebuild the car too again. But uh, right now it's running and ready for a drive. Maybe we'll do that. Oh, hey, I got one more thing I want to show you real quick. Okay, the last thing we need to do is change out the fuel filter. And I keep mine tucked up back here. Tough to see. Let me see if I can worm in there. Okay, see it now. Where is it? There it is. Keep mine tucked up uh, above the transmission. Keep it out of the engine bay. If you want to start a lot of controversy, go on Facebook on one of the Volkswagen forums and ask where to put your fuel filter. I keep it out of the engine bay because it's just one more thing. Um, you know, you can keep all your hoses replaced. You can tighten all the clamps. You can have everything perfect, but you're relying on a little $1.50 plastic filter that can crack and break especially i think my belief if you have it on the high pressure side i know it's two psi i know it's not that much but all it takes is just a little crack and it's going to squirt fuel out of there whereas if you have it on the low pressure side it's going to suck air in there that's a little bit different the other thing is you can get hit someone can rear end you and that can crack your fuel lines or break your fuel lines or break your fuel filter and then you got a fire you did everything right it was someone else's problem so i keep it out of the way it just makes sense to not have it in there and not have it be a problem why would you put something up in the engine bay that could potentially break and leak i don't want it so i'm gonna put it underneath here if it breaks and leaks underneath here it's a lot less of a problem and i'll probably just come to a stop and, uh, and then not have a problem. I'll go, oh, what the hell happened? I'll see the fuel. I'm like, oh, lost my cheap ass $1.50 fuel filter. Now, if you get these at O'Reilly's like I did, they're $4.99. But if you buy them by the dozen, which I didn't this time, they're uh, a whopping $1.50 or so. So I'm going to pull out this old fuel filter. And uh, I've just got a couple of clamps on there. And then put in the new one, put the wheel back on, and we'll be on the road. End of lecture. One thing I did notice while I was under here was looking at the clutch cable right there. My nut is almost at the end and I really want to bring that back a little bit. Um, I'm having trouble, some trouble shifting and I think it's because I'm not fully releasing uh, the clutch. It's, uh, it's, it's still slipping a little bit and that can have some trouble uh, shifting. So I'm going to bring that a little bit. You, I can't do it one-handed, but you want to pull on that arm until you can feel it engage the clutch. And you want to bring that nut in uh, to that point. Uh, so that's just off of the clutch. You don't want it sitting there spinning. You want it, you know, just off of there. So when you put it in the clutch pedal, it actually uh, engages the clutch fully. So that's what I'm going to do. 
So I don't know if you can see on the end there, I've got a couple threads showing and uh, that's a little bit better. Um, now the clutch table cable is, is uh, under a little bit of tension. That's not clutch, there we go. Clutch cable's under a little bit of tension and uh, we'll try that out, see how that works. sucks it's pretty terrible you want to know how to change a rear mirror in a 70s Volkswagen ta-da now I can see behind me haha <laughs> New sticker. <laughs> 